Greetings. I hope to um, do a short video today. <laughs> I'll try. Um, to answer a question that I get quite often from people who are either new to witchcraft or who have recently decided to up their witchy game, I like to say, um, going from somebody who's dabbled in witchcraft to really wanting to live a life that is a little more magical, to make witchcraft a, a an active part of their everyday life. And they often come to me and say, what should I have? What do I need? What are some of the tools that I need? I believe that they ask me because I have a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of witch stuff. Um, in this room alone, I have a big devil covered in front of me and, and an altar with a cupboard above and big shelf unit and my spell table over here in the corner has a prosperity altar space beside it and, and cupboards above. And then of course my pink cupboard here has tools and I have another which is covered out in the, of course in the sun porch. And then of course I have items in trunks and other places for specific to um, uh, coven rituals when we hold those here. Um, so I end up with a lot of stuff. And I think people are a little overwhelmed by the amount of stuff I have. I'm overwhelmed by it myself sometimes. But um, I want to remind people that, first of all, two witches live in this house, not one. And secondly, we are both, we're living a double life <laughs> because we are both covened. We belong, we're members of a, of a Wiccan coven and we hold ritual here and elsewhere. And we also are what we consider to be solitary practitioners. Now, what is the difference? There's, there's some differences, but the only difference that is relevant today is the fact that I do not use, some things we use specifically for coven practice that I do not use in my private practice. They're not maybe necessary things I resonate with, um, but for coven use, this is the this is the tradition that we follow that the coven follows. So of course I follow their tradition, but privately I don't use certain items, but I need them for them. I use a lot of things that they do not know anything about or use or care about or whatever. We have completely two different practices. Also, my husband and I we while we share a lot of the practice of of our well he's coming with me with both of the practices. I also, he doesn't do some of the things that I do. Like I have a lot of tools that assist me with some of my divination work, some of my, particularly my tarot work or, or things that he really doesn't participate in. So we have, you know, I, it's a little bit more complicated when you look at what I have and when people think, well, do I need that? Do I need that? Well, no, you don't need it unless you're going to use it. That's what I want to say. Um, I do have uh, two other videos that I have posted previously in the last, uh, like two years ago, I think they are, which I will link below. Um, one is, a, is, is, you might be interested most, well, I think they're both of interest here if you have not seen them. One is from March of 2018, which is entitled Essentials in a Witch's Covered, where I address certain specific things. And also then I did a, a um, another video in June of 2018 entitled Living a Magical Life. And that deals more with uh, making magic, leave, keeping magic as a part of your day-to-day -day life. So if that is something that is affecting you, that you have maybe dabbled in witchcraft before, and now you really want to try to live the life of a witch, um, you might want to see that one, that video particularly for that reason. Um, but I do want to say that I think what happens when people become witches initially, that there is a tendency for all of us to, um, buy all the things. <laughs> we want to buy all the things. And I think that happens with whatever kind of a new hobby or interest we take up. We want to buy all the things. We want to have all the things. Within the SCA, my historical reenactment group, um, a very, new, a very real, <laughs> a 
the very real complication of that lifestyle is fabric hoarding. Linen and wool, particularly fabric hoarding, um, because of most of our clothes are made of linen or wool, and um, we have to sew most of our clothes or some for something. We're sewing all the time. We're always looking for price, good sales on linen and good sales on wool. And when we find it, we buy it, whether we have a use for it at the time or not, and we end up with bolts and bolts and bolts of fabric. That, that happens. That's a real thing in other things other than in witchcraft. I see funny memes all the time on witchcraft that they talk about witch math, witch math, um, for things like jars. That's a good one, and that I remember that one because that's something that applies to me. We love jars. Witches who are, have practices love jars because we use jars. We're always saving jars. Do I need that jar? Well, I don't know, but it's a good jar, so I'm going to keep the jar. So we end up with jars and jars and jars. Because <laughs> you never know when you're going to need to put something in it. Um, so trust me when I say whatever, whatever your intention is, why you want to acquire things for witchcraft. You will acquire a lot of things, whether you set out initially to do so or not, it will happen to you. So I wanna to try to get you to um, be a little more discerning when you start out, when you begin in what you purchase or acquire initially. I want you to give it some thought. And that's kind of the purpose of this video today. That's what's kind of different maybe about this one and the other two that I'm linking to is, um, I want to know, I want you to ask yourself first of all, what kind of a witch do you want to become? And I don't mean when I ask you what kind of witch you want to become, whether you want to become a kitchen witch or a hedge witch or a, um, you know, there's a lot of witches, um, different kind of terminologies for witches. Um, do you want to become Wiccan? Do you want to become, um, you know, um, I don't know I can't think of them right away, but you, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of different terminologies for witches. Um, first of all, I will say, which I've said in my other videos, even though I am now currently a Wicca, I do not speak for Wicca, and I do not, I will not. Whatever I address to you today, opinions that I address on this channel, this goes, this is, this goes for all of my videos, are about being a solitary practitioner. It addresses that practice. Not my Wiccan practice, not the business of my coven, but my personal um, practice, okay? want to be clear on that. So if you're looking for information on Wicca, don't come to me. It's not going to come. It's not going to happen. But I want to know what kind of a witch you want to be. Like, do you want to be somebody who um, does, uh, holds ritual? Do you want to have rituals? If you want to hold rituals... You're going to need certain kinds of items, I think, usually, traditionally. If you're going to hold, um, if you're going to have, hold altar space, set up altars, whether they're permanent or temporary, if you want to alter for any reason, um, whether just to hold a sacred space in your home, um, I use, like for instance, I have different altars. The one that I have in this room is always set. It is a permanent altar. It is always set. This, it always looks like this. It always it doesn't always look like this. It's always here. It is always dressed in some way. Usually, it usually is dressed. I usually I tend to dress it in the light and the dark of the year. I change so I change it out. You know, once a year changes over to dark or changes over to light, and and I will put seasonal items on it. You know, it's how when it will have certain things. It um, harvest it maybe have certain things or it Ostara or Yule. It'll have certain Maybe little items, or maybe colors, or different things like that. But other than that, it is it's just an altar, and it stays the same. And we use that altar for things like if I want to hold things, we can, in our personal practice, if we want to, like my husband's always collecting feathers from the chickens, or he, or he brings me rusted nails for use in witches' jars, or he brings, I'm just looking over to see what's over there now, or have um, um if I make um, smudge bundles or new smudge bundles or whatever for use, um, we or I get a new deck, a new tarot deck or something like that. 
we put, we tend to put things on the altar that we want. We call it charging things. It's not necessarily charging, but it's like it's a holding it, holding it within the sacred space for a period of time until we're going to take it into use. That's what we do with things. That's just ten minutes of works. So we hold that altar for that purpose, really. That's really basically the reason for holding it. Um, but it's not necessary. It doesn't really do any. We don't use it for ritual. The ritual, the altar that we put up for ritual is temporary. It goes up for ritual and it comes down after ritual. It comes up, it is slayed, and after ritual, um, it is taken down and put away. And that was true whether that was before we were covened. We did it for our own solitary rituals. We did the same thing. We would set up wherever we would set up, we would set up a temporary altar. So we had things for that altar, okay? Because we held ritual. Okay. I have also um, a prosperity altar in here, and I have a, a um, healing altar that from time to time are used and from time to time are not used. They're not always used. Okay, but there they are. The space is there if I want it. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, that is, so if you're going to do any kind of altars, you're going to need certain things for altars. Most people use things on an altar, for example, some kind of candles. Um, whether they're colored appropriately or not, doesn't matter to you or whatever you want it to be used for. It does not matter. But some kind of candles are usually used. Things to represent the elements are usually used. Some kind of water or vessel for water. Some kind of something to symbolize earth. It can be a, a simple, you know, like a um, altar stone. Or it could be just, you know, it could just be uh, like a, like a, um, you know, I have a, a gem here. It's a different gem. Here's the amethyst, and here's a black obsidian that I just have here on my reading table. I could use something like that, some kind of stones, gemstones or crystals on the altar, or salt, a little dish of salt, something like that. Something to represent air, which could be a lot of things, but for a lot of people, we just use incense. Something to burn incense in. And then, of course, um, fire, which is candles. Fires is the candles. Candle, fire, what did I say? Fire, um, water, some of water, earth, and um, air. Okay? Other things you want is is up to you. If, you. if you like things to represent the deities, you can. I have a lot of videos in the past where I didn't use statuary. I just used, when I was wanting to work with a certain deity, I would just use an image on the internet to represent that deity. Um, and some people don't use them at all. Some people just use the God and Goddess candle, a candle to represent each one. So candles, those kind of things, if you're holding ritual, would be um, necessary. And I also believe if you're going to set up a ritual space, any kind of a sacred space, you need some kind of a cloth, some kind of an altar cloth. It doesn't have to be a specific cloth called an altar cloth. I don't have anything called an altar cloth. But I do use a cloth. Sometimes I use a silk cloth. I'll use shawls and things to cover, or I will use um, little tablecloths, or I will use, um, I've even used like a placemat. I've used doilies that my grandmother has made, or dresser scarves, we used to call them, that you would put on the top of a dresser. Anything like that, because I don't like to put um, things on a bare table. I want to set the table. It's set the table. It's like when my father, I'm <laughs> living with my father, we, we set the table, if it was lunch, if it was dinner, it didn't matter what the meal was, the table was covered at least with a place, with a place mask, and it always had a candle on the table. That's just why we did it all the time in our, in our home. My table here, my reading table, I have it covered all the time, and then of course I have an extra little um, wool square, a wool blanket here that I read on, that I use for my reading, specifically for, for reading. Okay. That's just how I always said that. So if that's what you're going to do, if you're going to do any kind of reading or, or divination work, you need something to you put on. Read, put your tarot cards on to read. Um, put your, set your candles on for, to hold your altar space. Okay. That's personal opinion for me, but this is, you're asking my personal opinion, so you're going to get it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> whether or not you're in or out of the closet is going to make a big deal. But I really believe that if you've come to the point where you're asking me about stuff and about what you need, most of you are thinking of 
um, having some way of keeping that private yourself, even if you're in the closet, some kind of a space, holding some kind of a space, whether it's in a personal room or in a closet or in a trunk somewhere that you can take in and out, that you've reached that point where you're, you're getting enough stuff that you want to be able to use them. So, you know, whether you're in or out of the closet is not that particular to this subject, um, unless it's going to be in terms of what kind of things. And I think there's a lot of people here on YouTube who are in the closet, so to speak, who give, offer a lot of advice for others who are, how you can set up some space or have things, um, particularly in that, in that um, situation. I'm not in that situation, so I really can't, I don't want to address it because I'm not an expert. Another thing to consider if you're going to be, when you're doing witchcraft is, are you going to be casting spells or not? You know, there are a lot of witches who do not cast spells. So a lot of the stuff that you see is for spell casting. Okay? If you're going to only set up an altar, you need a couple candles. You don't need a, a room full of them. You don't need a cover full. I've got boxes and boxes of candles. <laughs> I use a lot of spell crap. I use a lot of candles and I always use candles and spells. I always use candles for, um, even if it's a healing spell. It involves a candle. It involves a candle. I'm really into candles. So of course I have a lot of candles and I have to have them in different colors. I don't have to. I can use any color I want, but I find them, it helpful to my, my personal practice when I use colored, specific colored candles. If you don't know about that, I have some other videos on that. I also sell um, spell kits on my website, and I have um, several videos that show you how to use some of those spell kits. Um, will you be doing any kind of brewing or making tinctures or making um, making your own incense or burning incense or, or practicing divination? See, if you're going to be doing these things, you need tools specifically for that. You know, for, and what I'm talking there basically is herbs, a lot of herbs, a collection of herbs and stuff. If you are not going to be using, make, using spell work or making your own incense or um, making tinctures or anything like that, you, you don't need a big, you don't need a cupboard full of herbs. You don't need that. Where it is very, I know it is very um, tempting if you go into some kind of a witchy shop that sells them you know, all these jars and jars of herbs, it looks very inviting. It looks very tempting to you want to have that too. I have a really lovely witch's cupboard over here that people really like because I have a lot of stuff in it. But you know, I use it. I make my own incense blends and I have sold them. And I also do a lot of making tinctures and a lot of spell work that include burning of herbs. Okay. Or making oils with herbs. If you're not going to be doing that, you don't need the herbs. You don't need it if you're not going to be making your own incense blends or burning on a cold disc. If you just want to burn little cones of incense or sticks of incense, you don't need all of those herbs. So be realistic what you need and what you don't need. Try to, you know, make, keep a difference. The one thing I do want to say, though, no matter how involved or how less involved you want to be in a lot of these um activities, which activities, that I wish everybody when they're starting out, that you just start out, remember, if you're going to be dabbling in witchcraft, whether or in divination or anything like that, whether it's a big dabble or a little dabble, a dibble, would that be a dibble or a dabble, I'm not sure, <laughs> make sure that you have items or web methods to cleanse your space and ways to protect yourself and your home and your space. I, I can't say that enough. I can't emphasize that enough to you. It is so important. It's so important. If you're gonna believe it all in magic and the magic that witchcraft is about, then you also have to believe in protection, in cleansing, okay? If you're going to do spell work, don't even think about doing it without protecting yourself. We just came out of Samhain, and we all did a lot of fun things in Samhain, and we've done things, you know, and we've talked and talked and talked, and people talk about the, the veil being thin at that time, and all of the spirits wandering around, and 
trying to communicate with us, etc. If you're going to believe in that at all, you better believe in putting up some protection. Your protection can be something that you see or something you do not see, but it has to be there. It can be something as simple as just washing, using like a, 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 a smoke to smudge, like from a burning a smudge wand or just burning some kind of smoke, in, in special incense, whatever. Um, cleansing your space that way or cleansing your space, you know, with a, a cleanse like people use Florida water or Cascaria powder, make a room set of that to wash and scrub. It can be something as simple as that. I use, I also, I do, I do smudging, of course, all the time. I also do um, putting up witches' purses or sachets or whatever you want to call them around at my doorways or um, there's so many things that you can use. Do your research, look at some videos, watch some videos and do some research and see what you can use. My, my chickens have protection on them. My, um, my cats have protection. My home has protection. My dogs, my dogs right now do not have personal protection on them. But I'm going to be doing a video in the future about ways that we can protect our dogs. Because our dogs need special protection, particularly. Like my cats and my chickens need protection, but they tend to they live here. They don't go anywhere. My cats stay in the house, and my chickens stay in the yard. They don't go down the street. <laughs> my dogs go. My dogs go. will go places. So when we start to go, we haven't had them anywhere for you know much, and ch but we were we will start oh, now that things are starting to open up more. They will be out more, and at that time they will I will put putting protections on them, and we will talk about that in the video. But don't think that you can believe in one kind of magic and not both. <laughs> it's important. So if you, the very first things that should come into your mind before you start dabbling, or before you start getting serious about doing something about within witchcraft, is to get some protection in place. Get some protection in place. There's some. There's some. A lot of videos on the subject. I have some, and other people have some, and I and I suggest you use those. Cleansing your space. Okay. The other thing is to be honest with yourself. This is my last point, I believe. Be honest with yourself about what you resonate with and what you do not resonate with. We collect things all the time in this home, in our practice, because of our own practice and of course their coven practice and from because we have other bridges around us and sometimes we will collect things there will be things um brought into us from ritual and um you know they're meant to be like little um little gifts or little tokens that you get following a ritual whatever um or sometimes they're just left behind. We used to always keep these things. We used to always keep them, just like we kept in the SA, we kept side tokens. Every event we went to, we had to get a side token, and we kept them all thinking, oh, wow, how nice it is. Would you know how many events we would go to, the two of us would attend over in a period of over 20 years? We had, some, we had side tokens coming out of our ears. I mean, seriously, how many of these can you collect? Well, the same thing happens, like I said, in whatever hobby you get involved in. And here in which in uh, witchcraft it, it happens the same way. We're getting all these little tokens and things, and I used to collect them and keep them all and whatever. And then I started to realize a lot of them I was collecting, I didn't resonate with personally. They were they were important to the ritual that we just had or to whatever we did, the activity that we just did. But as far as keeping it long term and using it again for another reason, I saw something I resonate with. It goes. I purge it right away. I get rid of it right away because it's like, I can't, I will be smothered. I will be smothered under this stuff if I keep it all. If you resonate with using gems and crystals, then that's wonderful. If you resonate with material cards, that's wonderful. But if it's something that you don't want, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Don't, don't keep it. Do not buy patchouli because I like patchouli. If you don't like the smell of patchouli and you don't really care, you can say to me, I don't care what magical properties patchouli has. I think it smells like ass. Pardon me. But I think it smells like ass. I don't want to use it. Then please do not use it. 
there's something else you can use in this place. Don't buy everything that is popular just because. I have a rosemary bush. It's very prolific in my yard. So, of course, I'm going to use rosemary. I know rosemary is not for everybody. Rosemary has a lot of wonderful properties to it. It is a very, very strong, overpowering fragrance, first of all, to it, and taste if you're going to use it for anything. It's, it can be very overpowering. So unless it's something that you you like and enjoy, don't use it. Okay. In case, if you do not, if you go into a gem store and you pick up a piece of black obsidian, for instance, well, this, oh, look, Bale, you know, um, Good Wife likes, she, Good Wife talks about um, black obsidian. She wears a lot of it on her bracelets. Here's, here's, right now I have a whole bracelet pretty much of it here. I have it here on this bracelet. I, you see it all the time on me. I always have this, this rock here on my reading table. Um, it's something that I really love. I love lack of sitting. It, it absorbs a lot of the um, negativity. It keeps, it keeps me, uh, it filters that. It filters a lot of that for me. And um, I love it for protection. I love it for a lot of reasons. But if you pick up a, a piece of black obsidian and it does, snowflake obsidian, excuse me, and it does not do anything for you, if you don't, if you can't feel something from it, put it down. Don't walk away. Use something else. Amethyst. Here I have a piece of amethyst, and I do wear amethyst from time to time. I have it on. <laughs> That's pretty much of a coincidence. I have it on. You know. If you like amethyst, because other than for the reason that it's purple, some people like it because it's purple. Well, that's lovely, but it's not because it's purple that I like it. And I don't think you should ever pick anything because it is purple. And here, as a matter of fact, this one is not really polished, so this doesn't really look purple. I don't think I'd even to you. I can see purple in it, but that's not it. It's not the color for me. It's the property. Okay. I wear a lot of amber. I love amber. I wear amber in the SCA and out of the SCA. A lot of my bracelets are amber. Uh, I wear amber necklaces. I have a lot of it. Um, amber is something you love or you hate. It doesn't matter. You know, amber has the nickname the witch's stone. It's only the witch's stone if it's good for you. If it's not good for you, you don't care what it is. You don't care what it's called. Just like that, we have to do things to other things. Do you like the use of a wand? Do you like, does you resonate with a wand or not? Do you resonate, you know, for me, my hand is my wand. I don't need a wand. Okay, I don't really care about a wand. Do you resonate with it or not? Same with deities. Do you have, do you resonate with, um, Garnunas or not? Do you resonate with, you know, um, Locks me or not? Locks me. Do you resonate? I'm kind of a lips list today. <laughs> Do you resonate with um? You know um. Um Buddha. Do you like the idea of Buddha or not? Do Do you want a Buddha in your home or does it matter to you? I have two. Does it matter? I'm not a Buddhist, but I like. I really like Buddha. I love Buddha. <laughs> But that's a personal thing. That has nothing to do with what what I like and what you like. Two different things. I'm rambling. I don't mean to ramble. I just want to say, if you're going to use, if you are really going to use something, you really want to use it, then you use it. If you do not want to use it, don't let it clutter your life. Your magic is not going to be worth it. Your magic is start to have it now when you're when you're new, so that everything that you have in your life is there to be used as your tools. It's not there to, to keep you from your magic, it's there to enhance your magic. And good luck on your journey. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm Rebecca, and I will say, because there's a good question, the good wife. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you blessings.